Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Diana Clark. I'm an interior decorator here in San Diego, California. Well, today I have so many great champagne tips for a beer budget that I felt as though I needed to crack out an entire bottle, not just one glass. I'm going to talk about house plants and the 12 mistakes that I see most often when I visit my clients' homes. I'll show you what the mistakes are, and then I'm going to show you some quick, easy, fun, creative, and yes, cheap ways to correct these mistakes. Before I dive in though, I'd like to ask you if you enjoy this type of decorating content, which I sure hope you do, will you leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel? Now, I want to say one thing about houseplants before I start giving you the mistakes and the corrections. A houseplant, in my view, has one job. That's to look pretty. And so often, the plant does not look pretty, or the way it's presented does not look pretty, but we are going to solve that right now. Mistake number one is hanging on to a half-dead houseplant. When you buy fresh flowers every week for five bucks, in a month you've spent 20, and in five months you've spent 100, well, a houseplant can last you that long, and if it stops looking pretty, throw it in the trash and get a new one. Trailing plants are super popular, but after a while, especially in a low-light situation, they start to get really leggy and they're not pretty anymore. Maybe they don't deserve to go in the trash, but they certainly need to be cut back or moved to a higher light situation. Please, don't keep plants like this around. They're just not pretty enough to deserve the real estate you're giving them. You might have a gorgeous house plant in a beautiful container, but if all or part of the price tag is still stuck on the container, as far as I'm concerned, that ruins the whole effect. I use hairspray, nail polish remover, which is basically acetone, or a product called Goo Gone to remove price tags. This is so easy to do and instantly improves the look of your house plant. The care instructions for your plant might be important to keep as a reference, but they sure don't look pretty when they're still hanging on the plant itself. I scotch tape mine to the inside of my kitchen cabinet door and I suggest you consider doing the same. No matter how spectacular the plant, if it's still in the cheap plastic container that it came home in, it doesn't deserve a spot in your home decor. You really need to get a container. Of course, lots of containers can be pretty expensive, but since we're talking champagne tips for a beer budget here, I thought I'd just show you a cute idea that I found online. If you Google plant in a paper bag, you'll turn up a ton of great examples of how you can make them yourself or how you can style them or even where you can buy fanciful bags for like three or four bucks. I think it could be a lot of fun. When I run into this type of unsightly problem, here's what I do. I just get out my trusty box cutter and I cut off the rim of the plastic container and then it'll sit nicely in the decorative container. Never mind that the poor plant is being strangled to death, it also just looks very badly proportioned. An easy rule of thumb for this type of plant is that the container should be about half as wide as the plant. This basket is the right size for the table that it's on and the mirror that's above the table, but the plant looks kind of silly because it's way too small. You never want your plant to be overpowered by the container that it's in. They both deserve equal star billing. Let's face it, there's not much that's pretty about bare dirt. There are quite a few ways to solve that problem, and these are three of my favorite ones because they're pretty easy to do. If you know me at all, you know that one of my decorating mantras is all objects of art look best when elevated. Well, I consider houseplants to be living objects of art, and I encourage you to do the same. There are so many interesting, fun, creative ways that you can raise up your houseplant just a little bit or a lot, whatever the space needs. Let's take a look at a few of these ideas just to get you kind of fired up.
I absolutely love using funky candlesticks as plant holders. I probably like that better than using them for candles. Incidentally, you might like to know that I found every one of these at a thrift shop. I think the most I paid for one of them was $3.75, and then I got the senior discount on top of that. I'm just going to jump back in here for a second to say that when I searched for pot feet, I was overwhelmed by the choices. They were adorable, fanciful, traditional, rustic, and everything in between. This is maybe the most fun way to raise a plant just that crucial little bit. This is mistake number 11, and this is mistake number 12. Both of these boo-boos can be easily corrected by raising the plant on a stand, either a short one or a tall one, depending on the look you're going for. Doing this will not only make your plant look a zillion times better, it also has the added benefit that it'll protect your floor. When I water my house plants that are on stands, I slide a bowl underneath and it catches all the drips. And then two or three hours later, I take the bowl away and my wood floor is perfectly fine. I hope I've helped you to look at your own house plants through new fresh eyes. Maybe you saw that you were making one or two of those mistakes and maybe you're inspired to go fix them. That would be so great. Let's make our homes more beautiful in every little way that we can. Now I just have one last thing to say and many of you already know what it is. Please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, because I love you.